Hey up, and welcome to Northern Soul Gaming. Today, we're going to be starting our first game playthrough of Battle Brothers. Now, Battle Brothers is a turn-based RPG, which has been around for about four years, uh, created by Overhype Studios, which is quite synonymous to other turn-based tactical games, not unlike XCOM. Um, and as you'll see as we go through this game, that there is a lot of love put into it. Um, you, as you can probably already hear, the music, the music is absolutely fantastic, and there are some amazing tracks um, that I could just listen to without even playing the game. This first episode is going to be more of an introduction into all the systems, as there are quite a lot. It is surprisingly deep. Um, but they mesh together really well. Um, some of the systems may not be available to you if you just buy the base game, um, as there are several different DLCs out of it. Um, as you can see down at the bottom, I have all of them installed, although I haven't played much of Blazing Deserts yet, but I will be getting into it a little bit more later. Uh, but for now, let's get started. Um, before we get into a new campaign, I'll just show you the options I'm playing currently, as you can change and mix and match them quite well. Um, for the sake of flow, for the gameplay, I always change the movement to be a little bit faster, as you can get into, when you get into further late game, um, you do get into battles where it's dozens and dozens and dozens of soldiers, and it can get a bit trodden, and it just gets a bit muggy. Um, I also always turn on auto loot because I've been stung by that on many occasions. Uh, so auto loot is uh, no matter what, it automatically loots everything found after combat as long as you have the space to carry it. Because if you don't have auto loot, if you click this exit, you won't get anything. And loot is very, 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 very important in this game. Um, resetting equipment every, after battle is just a case of if you swap out your equipment when you're playing the game when you're in mid-battle, um, it will reset you back to before the start of the battle, so you're not going into the next battle with the wrong thing, or you're unarmed, and you just get absolutely murked. Um, and all the pause after losing C, I quite like just in case I'm being chased, or if something like direct is happening around the city, you will get a few quests which are based around defending and so forth, so it's good to have that extra time just to prepare. Anyway, saying that, let's get into it. So, with Battle Brothers, you have several different versions of the company origin. Now, this is like the basis of your game. So, the first one that came out when it was in beta was the Rebuilding the Company one, which is, as you can see from the one skull at the top, it's the easiest one to go from. It's very much like a tutorial one. Um, and then you have a slew of different ones, and each company origin gives you different... Um, rules, let's say. Um, so, for example, uh, in the Peasant Militia, which is a good one to try out, uh, you can actually start with 12 people straight away, but they're all poorly equipped, so they'll have like really bad weapons or no armor, very little armor, um, and they won't be the best at fighting. Um, and you can also take 16 people into battle, when usually it maxes out at 12. Um, but the drawback to that is you can't hire anyone who isn't a lowborn. The one we're going to do today, and hopefully going forward, is Lone Wolf, which is one of the hardest openings. You start with one Battle Brother, who is quite well experienced, um, and then you can only have a max of 12 people. And if this guy dies, that's it, it's over. So it's like being an avatar. But he is also an amazing hedge knight, so you'd hope would survive a little bit. So that's the one I'm going to pick. Uh, I've already sort of set this up beforehand, so I think this is a great banner. You have loads of choices, but I'm a big fan of our Deus Vault looking boy right here. Uh, we're going to be the Northern Lads, you can probably guess why. Um, in terms of late game crises, crises um, I usually put it on random. So there are four different late game crises, crises. Um, they usually start cropping up around day 70-ish, 
Um, with random, it can be any of them. I have noticed that most of the time the first one is usually Nobles at War, but it does chop and change quite a bit. And if you do continue, continue playing the game and you get through the first crisis, it will then carry on. So you can actually end up doing all four crises within one game. Now, there's also the option for permanent destruction. Um, that can happen quite a lot in some late game crises, like green skin, green skin invasion is insane for that, because uh, orcs and goblins will just wreck towns. Um, I've done it a few times, but it gets to the point where you literally can't access anything, so it gets a bit mental. So I'm going to leave that one out, especially because we're going to be playing it for quite high difficulty. So there's three different effective difficulties, if you can include starting funds. Um, beginning veteran and expert, and then starting funds is high, medium, and low, so it depends on what gold you start with, and gold, as you'll see, is quite important. There's also iron mode, which we're definitely going to be doing. Now, originally I was going to do it on expert, expert, low, but I'm actually going to do it on veteran, veteran, low, just to make sure I do actually have a video, as I tried on expert, and I got absolutely murked. Um, map seed, you can literally, like any other game, you can literally type anything in and see what you get, but for the time being, we'll just go with that and see what happens. Alright, cool. So the Lone Wolf. You walk the stands of a jousting area. Moldy fruit and vegetables litter the floor. Dry blood freckles the seats. The silence fills the air. When you sit, the wood of the place seems to groan in unison, as though dis com discomforted by the haunts of a rare visitor. In your hands is a note looking for hardy men, knowledge of the sword preferred, but all welcome. It is an old note, its purpose long since served, but what draws your eyes the price offered to the task. More crowns than you could muster in five tournaments. This is the coin to be earned, and to hell with the joust and the sparring. We are not one to suit up for some other captain's orders. With all that you've earned over the years, you imagine you can start your own mercy band just fine. And that's just what we're gonna do. So, a few things to note. I'm just gonna stay paused. As you'll see on the screen, um, the UI is set up in quite a good way. Um, we start in a decent place called Wolfenfest. Usually, when you start on Lone Wolf, you do end up in a big citadel because that's where like the tournaments would be in medieval yore. You've got a few different systems that you can probably already see. So you've got gold, you've got food, you've got tools, you've got ammunition, and you've got medical supplies. And eventually, when we have an ambition, we'll get to that in a second, that will crop up there. You've got your time cycle, you've got your day and night cycle, which does make a difference in terms of combat we'll get into when that happens and then you've got your menu you've got your factions and relations which is all of the factions within this very game these change every time you have a different game and um, the houses are always randomized you always start off as, off as unknown um, in some cases you might not be neutral in some openings like the barbarian one is quite a bit more zany um, but in general speaking you usually start off on a neutral point None of the towns will show up on here until you have visited them. So as soon as you start visiting them, they'll show up, and each town is represented by one of the houses in most cases. But they also have se separate faction um, attitude towards you, which is separate to the house. Can get a bit confusing. Um, then you've got your obituary, which no one has died yet, but guarantee that someone will die. Um, your retinue, which is quite a recent thing uh, to the newest DLC. Uh, here you've got your donkey, who haven't bought yet, um, but it does let you have extra supplies. And then there's different spots for your retinue, but you need to be able to unlock them by going through your renown. And once you do, we can actually go through it. Because there are quite a few handy extra things which were would have been great in the start of the base game. Um, and then you have a camp button, but that you can just use T for. Um, it just speeds up like repairs and injuries, stuff like that. You'll see that. Uh, Toggling footprints, that's just so you can keep track of people when you're looking for them. Uh, Toggling lock into the camera is the same as X. And then there's the actual roster. So we've got Bertram, who we're going to quickly change the name to. To. Got a cat spell. Not one sort. And as you'll see, he starts off quite well with some decent armor, decent sword, because he is a hedge knight, as it were. Now, everyone has their own perks and traits, um, and also contention. 
So, are they content? Are they fed up? Are they elated? Are they euphoric? It all makes a difference when it comes to battles, because it gives you an advantage. Now, in terms of all the abilities down below, as you'll see, everyone has a slew of different numbers. So, for example, with him being a hedge knight, he has three stars in melee skill, two stars in melee defense, three stars in fatigue, which is actually pretty good. Um, I wouldn't have minded if one of them was hit points instead, because we're going to be going through that like a madman. But that's absolutely fine. That's a good start. Now, with him being a hedge knight and being the lone wolf campaign, you do start off as level four. So we can actually start leveling up here. Now, usually, if you see a five, you should go for a five. But I'm not super... I don't care too much about initiative when it comes to my Hedge Knight because he's literally a tank. A one a literal one man army. Imagine guts. Uh, so always take melee skill. Fatigue is gonna be a big must, mainly because his armor is gonna weigh him down quite a bit, and I'll also go for melee defense. And then you just get to do it a few more times to start off as level four. If you were starting off at like level 2, this only happened once. So this only happens once every level up. So once again, take a 4. Definitely take a 5 at Fatigue, I'm not going to miss that. And then plus 4 there, and then there should be one more after that. So I'll take plus 3 in Melee Defense, I'll take a plus 4 in Fatigue, and I'll take a plus 4 in Melee Skill. Now, obviously as you could probably guess, all of these skills do actually affect you in different ways. So Melee Skills gives you the uh, more of a bit probability to actually hit. Range skills the same, but with bow and arrows, crossbows, etc. Melee defense is exactly what it sounds like. Range defense is exactly what it sounds like. Initiative is the higher in turn order, so the earlier in position that you appear. Resolve is exactly what it sounds like. Um, this also can change when we get into different enemies like ghosts, which can get a bit spicy. Uh, and fatigue and hit points are exactly also what we sound like. Um, fatigue plays a big factor in wearing heavy equipment like the Hedge Knight. Um, so we will see that we have to balance fatigue quite well, otherwise we will run out of breath a lot on the battlefield. Now, perks, everyone gets them. Um, it's the same set of perks for everyone. Um, you get a perk for every level up. Um, obviously there are some good perks, there are some not so good perks. Um, I'm going to set him up as the way I would, obviously you can set him up your own way if you play yourself. Um, so I'm going to go with Recover, as I was saying with Fatigue, it's super useful because um, you can actually reduce the accumulated fatigue by 50%, which as a Hedge Knight is massive. Uh, I'm going to pick 9 lives um, because instead of dying once per battle, I'll actually survive a killing blow, which for a guy who has to live for the game to continue, it's pretty important. Um, and I'll also go with Colossus, as that also increases my hit points. Now, the more we level up, the more, more of these are going to access, um, like Sword Master, for example, because we are going to be using a sword, um, ETC, ETC, but we'll get to that. But for now, let's actually play the game instead of talking about it. So, I'm going to go to the closest place here to see if it's got anything for me, but I highly doubt it because it is a citadel, so they're usually based on house contracts and not basic contracts. Um, there's nothing I really need to buy right now, because the good thing about the Hedge Knight is you don't have to pay him, because he's technically you. Um, I don't particularly want to hire anyone right now, unless there's someone really good, but... Oh, actually, I might take the Apprentice. Now, the good thing about Apprentices are they get experience a lot faster. Um, so, and they also can be quite cheap, so they're actually quite good early starting people to buy. Um, oh, it's two of them. That's interesting. Um, what's also good is that you can actually try them out instead of fully hiring them. Um, which means you can figure out what our perks are before you buy them. I'm not going to bother doing that because that costs more money than it actually is worth right now. And also, there's a good chance they might not survive. There's a good chance I might not survive. So for the time being, I am going to hire Engelbert. <laughs> and he's he's got no perks at all. So his only thing is he's got a 10% experience gain. So let's equip him out a little bit. 
because it will be useful to have a second person, so I'm not literally getting overrun by everyone. Um, now, he's going to start off in not the best position, because there's not really a lot going on here. Now, a good start is spears, because they add, the offset, they add more of a percentage to hit, so they're easier to hit with. But they're also quite expensive right now, which you could probably guess. Um, okay, um, base karma, we're going to be out of money in no time with this right. Cool. How much do I pay? So I pay him nine crowns a day. So now that I've hired someone, we are actually losing money every day. We need money to buy food, tools, ammunition, if we've got ranged, so on and so forth. We also need to pay our guys. We're the only one who doesn't have to get paid. So we could technically lose everyone except me. I think it'll be a uh, but it'll be for free. Not that I want that to happen. So, I'm we'll starting off in not the best position, but still better than he was. He's not going to die instantaneously. Now, because he doesn't have a shield, he does ha gets double grip, which gives him an extra 25% damage boost. Now, which is great, but he's got a lot less defense, and there's a high chance he might just die straight away. But Iron Man's Iron Man, baby! Let's have a look. So, nothing else really here now. The best thing to do would be to go to a smaller... Oh, that's a Citadel as well. Go to a smaller area. And, yeah, okay, so started off in a weird corner. It's good to visit everywhere anyway, um, but more often than not, when you're looking for contracts, you want to more look for smaller, like here, smaller areas to begin with, because they won't hand out um, the feudal lords contracts, they'll hand out like the standard village contracts, which is what you can do to begin with, because you can't unlock them yet. See, as it says, the contract's locked, so you have to leave there and go up to Hirschback instead. And see how it slowly goes down. Alright, now that we've arrived, you'll see that currently everything's closed because it's night time, so you can't actually go to the markets or anything until it's daytime. Um, but there is a one score contract available for us. We also see that there's terrified villagers, which is probably to do with the actual contract. As long as it's not Alps, I'll take it. I'm not dealing with Alps. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is absolutely fine. Now, what you can do is, if you've got several contracts in the same place, you can actually say, I need time to think about it, which will leave it open, and it means you can access all the others, which will be all here. It's usually about three max in a place. Um, so you can check them all out before you can accept them all. Once you've accepted a contract, you're locked in. You can't pick another one unless you drop that contract or complete it. Now, you can drop contracts, but... Obviously, this will affect uh, your reputation with the house or the, or the village that you're helping out. So, we'll, we'll accept this. We'll go on our first rough and tumble. As to where we're going is up north. How poetic. Alright, now we're here. And it's Naxeras. Now, Naxeras aren't too bad to begin with, but you'll see that they all start to eat each other and become more of a nightmare. So let's get into it. It'd be really good if there was some terrain. What's good about terrain is you can actually use it to elevate yourself and give yourself a better hit chance, because right now, Old Engelbert's not in the greatest positions. So, let me pull him back a bit and do that. Let's see if they take the bait. Yeah, of course they don't. Cool story. Right. There we go. Right, if we keep them on the back foot slightly, we might have a chance. Good. Not good. Ah, uh, here comes the pummeling. Come on, bro. Hang in. Come on. Ah, Jesus. Maybe not. This might be it for our friend here. Who's injured? Which one's injured? Well, he, he, he tried. That's what's important, I guess. Oh, 71 you miss! Come on, man. Wow. Not just killed, but beheaded. 10 out of 10. Now begs the question is, 
Can I survive? Okay. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Chef's kiss. Alright, only problem being I've left them more bodies, so we might get bigger now. 10 out of 10, he tried to move into my window. And he got exactly what was coming to him. See you later, mate. Right. Although we had to sacrifice first and only follower. I might be able to get back for stuff. Maybe. Now you saw that. But I cut his artery, which means he's going to start bleeding out soon as well. So, I think... Got this in the bag, boys. See you later. So, <laughs> as you can see, Engelbert is now missing his head. In some cases, people can be knocked down and survive and have permanent wounds. Um, in this case, obviously, he's beheaded, so there's no way in hell that was happening. But I got his spear back, so I guess I'll I'll take that. A job well done. It's back to Hirschback. With one less person. At least I don't have to pay him anymore. Maybe he was not destined to be good after all. The aim and the main aim would be to get twelve strong. But it's gonna be a bit of a jaunt to begin with, because all we're gonna be able to afford is Little villages. See, I can't even afford the lumberjack man. This is how much of a bit of a curve it is. What I found playing Lone Wolf before is that, in terms of difficulty curve, it gets a little bit easier down the line. But for the time being, it looks like it's just me, myself, and I. And no tools to repair myself with. Let's see how many tools, how much tools are here. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. Well, gotta do what I gotta do. What else is next? Oh, my racing is so I want to get to the pet on the same spot. I'm all ears. Do we monsters, mon blues, monsters come to the patch? That pays alright. Now I could push for more pay, but it'll ruin my reputation a bit, so I'm just gonna leave it. Now you'll see that some feet have appeared. These are tracks we have to follow. Oh, nice one. So this is what I was talking about regarding ambition. So every now and then it will crop up and it will give you a choice as to what ambitions you want to follow. Now whenever you do an ambition and complete one, it greatly increases your renown, gives everyone a super big morale boost, and it can also lead to a few other things, like there's some very specific things where you can end up getting like legendary items, or like um, a banner, hopefully in the future, a better car, etc. Um, let's see what it says. So during camp, sitting and jesting with the men while they check their kit, Hone their blades and mend their armor. Your mind wanders off to think about new ideas for improving the company and its reputation across the lands. What is your conclusion and what do you tell the man who is yourself? So really, he's talking to himself. Um, we and allies forge a bond of friendship and trust one of the towns to get the company better prices, more volunteers, and more steady work. I'm going to pick this one first, mainly just on the basis that this one's a bit insane for me, for one person. So I'll try this. And I think we're probably going to pick Hirschbacks, because they already should be in a better standing with us, as it were. Open, yeah. So the more we do for these guys, the quicker our renown will rise. As soon as this gets to friendly, we'll get that. Now, I'm going to cheese this a bit by having the trading caravan help me out, technically. And there we go. If you're in range of other people, they will join in the fight. Example A. Now, I'm basically using it for an easy life. And also, if they're surrounding it, I can do that. These guys, being caravan hands, not great, but they're not terrible either. Oh, never mind. <laughs> well, rather him than me. Oh my god, they're all just dropping. Me. Come on, do some damage. Just like that, right, elevation. Oh boy, there's gonna be nothing left. This is this is a good idea.
Nice. Mate. See you later. Oh man, they're all dead. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's cheese there. Oh, that's that. Yep, it's over. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Ah, really wish you would let me loot the, those guys instead. But, you know what? It's fine with me. Is that just going to stay there? It's currently only... Oh, it just disappeared. Nice. Now, is there anything else to go? No, there isn't. What's good was, I didn't even get to take a hit that time. So I've actually got a little bit of spending money. When does that go bad? Ten days. All right, we still got loads of time. Um, there's no one here to even bother with. So let's move on to somewhere else, which is going to be. Da -da. Well, we'll stick with the title. And we'll go north. If there was actually anywhere worth going north to. Wow, it's, these are massively spread out. Okay, let's aim to go to Grunenbeck. Tarbon Moose. This is going to be a bit of a trek. But the majority of the places down here are all going to require renown to open up all the contracts which I don't have right now. But I will. Oh, God. Really? Okie dokie. So, currently surrounded in the forest against six barbarians. Not only this would be fine, but he's only one of me. My armor's not great. And I'm not, not highly leveled. Now, as much as I could probably cheese it, I can almost guarantee that there's more of them up here. Yep, there's one. Two. There's one of his friends. Ooh, I might have found my way out. Maybe. They are also quite fast, and they do get to take their turns first. Bro, that wasn't called for. Yeah, this guy, he's going to be a problem. Yep, he's called me. Now, if I escape, which I have, I still might have a slight chance to get out of here. Oh. Hello, friend. There's that white flag. That's my exit. And leaving stuns their group. So I might... <sighs> that does keep happening. But he gets out. Right, come on. I don't really feel like fighting these guys today, so... See you, fam. I'm out. Right. Now here comes the saucy part, because now they're stunned and I've got to get out of here. So let us be off. It's quick. Ooh, friends, help! Let's stick around here. Oh, amazing! So the ambition that we're looking to fulfil for Hirschback is done. Now, obviously, if there was more people, a lot more people's morale would have gone up, but. Currently, it's just me, so I'm now just being back to content instead of being disgruntled, so I'm fine with that. Now that an ambition is cleared, this clears off, and another one will pop up every now and then. So I'll get another text box in probably maybe about three or four days' time in game. Now let's be off to Grunenbeck, and hopefully not get ambushed by six barbarians in the forest again. So, contract here. Is a very little marketplace where prices aren't great, not awful, not great, not terrible. Everyone is expensive as all hell, so we shan't be doing that. Now, this one is a very specific quest. Uh, caravan quests, you're locked in to escorting a caravan. It can be alright depending on the length how long it takes, but it does literally lock you in. 
for this entire thing, so you can't get out, as it were. And sometimes the returns aren't really worth it. So I'm going to say I'll need some time to think about this, and I'm going to go to the city above, because I want to see if I can find me a bro who isn't going to get murdered in the first fight to knock zeros. Rip. Name I can't remember. Alright, cool. So this is better in terms of contracts. I just didn't see if there's nobody here right now, but that's because it's night time. If I change it to daytime and wait, camp, speed time up. Give me time to repair my stuff even more. As soon as it hits dawn, go back in. There we are. Now, there's not a lot to pick from, honestly, but there are a few, especially a poacher. Which, I can't tell if that's the wonky bow. If it's the wonky bow, then it's terrible. But I can't actually tell. Now, an archer would actually be quite useful because I can keep, they can keep out of the way. They are also a lot more expensive. So I'm going to stick with my apprentice taking, and hopefully this one will be more fortunate than the last. Now let's see if he's got any perks. He does. He has Dexterous, so plus 5 melee skill. Not bad, Emmerich. Not bad. So, obviously, he'll have a little bit to give to him. Probably avoid the part where I tell him that it was part. It was the old guy stuff. Sell his shit, because they don't need it. Sell these for a bit of extra money. And let's see. How many tools do I need to actually repair? Eight. Don't really want to buy the tools right now for that. Um, I'm going to give our friend here at least a small shield, because there isn't actually any big shields here. So I'll give him a buckler. It will be a literal difference between life and death. So it does make a difference. Um, as for armor, it is a big expense. I don't know if he'll survive. So I don't really know if it's worth it, to be quite honest. But you know what? I actually quite like this dexterous man. So let's try and keep him alive. You always try and go for cheaper stuff, like the stuff that's a bit battered that you can repair. It's usually, it can be quite a good deal in that regard. Um, but for now, oh, that does make it so I've only got about 150 left. That's not great. But you know what? I trust that this man might actually survive. So let's get, get him up front and center with me. Now, look at, have a quick look at the contracts, and I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. Da -da -da -da. So this is a map quest. So, effectively, you go on a map, you get a general direction of where it's going to be, and then you go and find it. And then you come back and get money. It's quite easy money. Um, so I am actually going to accept this job. But I'll say I'll need time to think about it, just so I can open this two-score contract, which is, once again... A caravan quest, which could be quite good, but I can almost guarantee it will kill our new guy. Almost guarantee. So, I'm going to accept this contract, and we will pick up from there next time. Thank you all for watching.